see these dancers are just beautifully spinning with their long, ornate robes. It's such a great moment. I love to explore, I love to investigate, but ultimately it's investigating with the purpose of capturing something and bringing it back. I've known art's work for many years. Uh, you know, you see it in books and posters all over the place. So the chance to go and see how he does things and to get to some of these situations uh, is very exciting. Your rhinos, tigers, bears, leopards. One sports. of the great things about working on this series is I've had the chance to work with an excellent photographer, you know, a, a world-renowned photographer. Art has definitely set a high standard for the imagery for the show. And it's, it's been a fun challenge for everyone on the crew to kind of keep up and really keep everything up to that standard. Shooting with a small crew is great. We're quick, we're light, we carry relatively little gear, though sometimes it doesn't look like it. So we're just more mobile, we're nimble. To have an idea, talk about it really quickly and be able to execute that right away. They get what the show's about, and if anything, they're way ahead of me and encouraging me, and I think it's fantastic. We're basically happy. We got something out of nothing. It was a beautiful moment, great transitions. Everybody's happy, we'll fight later. Sometimes Art just heads off, you know, he's got something in mind and he'll just make a beeline for it and we may or may not be ready to jump on that bandwagon. As we're organizing our equipment and sort of trying to think about what we can make of the situation, he's disappeared. Uh, just over here on the left, probably in the but white room. shot. He called us down. Art, where are you? Okay. He's kind of like a tracking dog. And it's like you're, you're hunting, and he's the dog out there finding the stuff. And so it's like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? And then all of a sudden he barks. Call it Art. Art, where are you? And, you know, off through the trees, you'll hear this voice. I'm over here. We'll find him eventually. But, you know, every now and then, it's just like, oh, what happened to Art? There's a degree of delicacy to the work we do, especially when working with cultures. We're going into places that are often relatively or very unvisited, and it's essential that we portray the cultures we visit in a way that's respectful. We've got art with a camera right in front, we have two photographers behind them, and then I'm hovering around someplace else photographing or doing other duties. So it can be really intimidating. I mean, after all, I, we're trying to celebrate you know, these traditional cultures. Sabina. Sabina. Ah, <laughs> I think the key is just to smile and to be compassionate. And we often end up, you know, teasing our subjects. It's a way to break the barriers that are there linguistically and culturally otherwise. You know, you, you look at somebody with a sparkle in your eye and they look back and you've got an instant connection. Yeah. One more. First, usually I put the camera in their hands, let them take a picture of me, and in the age of digital, they can look at the results, and it's very engaging, it's very immediate, and it's perfect for breaking down cultural barriers. Walking into the monastery, you feel this profound sense of awe at the feeling that you could be stepping into something that happened hundreds of years ago and not much has changed. That moment. It's like, wow. <laughs> Our goal is to put together a portrait of place that celebrates the beauty of the place, that talks about what's unique about the place, and that conveys a bit of its, of its spirit, really. And if we can do that, I feel that we've been respectful and that we've really celebrated and honored the people we're visiting. <laughs> This is our national sport, the archery. Archery is your national yeah. sport. Here they are playing with the traditional bow and arrow that's uh, made from the bamboo. 
I would like to introduce you to the traditional sharpshooters. Okay, I'd love to yeah, meet okay. these guys. Hello. Hello. Art. Art. It's very nice meeting you. How far is that target? That's wow. About, oh, that's about 140 meters. 140 meters, the size of an American football field. This is amazing. Can I take pictures here? Oh, yes, yes, please. So what they're uh, trying to do here is that, you know, when the other uh, other team is shooting, you know, so they try to distract him so that, you know, ah. he don't hit the target and then, like, the opening gets the point. So can I distract one? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shoot it, Oh. They still come very close. But don't touch me. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow! Oh, nearly. He came to that close to the target. Teach me. How am I holding the arrow? Like this? I know. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill my cameraman. Run for your lives! Oh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I come with an idea, and that's just maybe 20% of what I shoot. The rest is serendipitous. The rest is just an emotional response to what's coming together in the moment. It's light, subject, and circumstance. And when they come together, it's magic. And I work very fast because I know that these moments are just, uh, just so ephemeral that they're gone in a flash. We'll be walking along, we'll be driving along, and all of a sudden Art says, stop. I see something. I want to shoot this. And I'm, I'm quickly checking around to see what does he see that I don't see. We're all seeing the same thing. We're looking and seeing the same thing. But Art's picking out particular things that are you know, in tune with his aesthetic. And in a lot of cases, it's patterns, it's textures, it's details. You know, I may see the pattern before I even see the herd of animals. He's really very visual, comes from an artistic background that most photographers don't. It's really an objective of mine to really translate a subject in a slightly different way or a greatly different way. For example, in Torres del Paine in, in, in Patagonia, everyone tends to look at just the mountains, but in the early morning light, you see these exploding lenticular clouds that actually dominate the frame. So trying to expand your vision and seeing these types of things has certainly been one of the things that we've, we've learned traveling with art. This is beautiful. This is a uh, ochre, and it puts on the skin, and when it dries, it becomes really red, right? Ah, uh, and this is for the, the white one. Ah, uh, this is like being in Nordstrom's. Okay, perfect. Nice. I'm not really trying to document a culture like a traditional documentarian. What I'm trying to do is find a sense of art. The magic's in the detail. I really try to pull out the essence of a culture through the abstract. And right now in front of me, there's this beautiful woman who's got a series of spots around her nose and her cheek. And I'm trying to zoom in as close as I can and just make a really simple abstract shot with the eye and the spots. Nothing more than that, nothing more complex than that. When they carl adorn themselves, it's very individualistic. No two patterns are the same. And that's what art is about, basically, is that self-expression through your own sense of aesthetic. These cultures don't really have museums or art galleries or even living rooms where they can hang art. They, in fact, become their own living, breathing works of art. Can I 
we have this space. Circle. Okay. This is known as designing your shot. Circle. Okay, you sit down. I see a beautiful pattern amongst their feet. Okay. Now I've got a beautiful circle. This is really hard work, but I think it's worth it. I love making artwork out of my subjects. Okay, look at it. These kids are great. It's wonderful to show them a reward. Oh, it went dark. When I'm photographing these coral, I'm trying to get them to look straight into my camera sometimes. I'm also shooting candid shots, but many times I want them to look straight into my camera and therefore straight into the viewer of my photo's eyes. So there's the connection that I feel at the moment I take the picture. It's a very, very effective way for people to feel connected to the subjects. <laughs> show about why people should care about these places. There's a conservation message embedded in each of these shows, whether cultural conservation or natural habitat conservation. And it's not an issues-oriented show. We're not saying these are the problems, you know, these are the solutions. We're saying this place is amazing. Take a look at it. What really works is just showing how beautiful something is, talking about how wonderful something is, and showing that, and showing that as intimately and in the best light that we can. We really do try to say, what is happening in this environment? What can change this environment for the better? The world really is a, a very beautiful place. It's being threatened on a number of different fronts. I mean, we all live on one planet. It's all important. And so by trying to bring an area closer to you to really show you the details and what it's personally like to, to travel through it and see it, it becomes a little bit closer to you. It's important that we show these places as pristine as they are now and hope that they can stay that way. Our mission is to keep traveling to the edges of the earth and to keep capturing its extraordinary diversity. We want people to see the beauty we see and to share in the responsibility for preserving it.